Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're talking about the Beretta Model 948 22 Long Rifle. Semi-automatic handgun. And as you can see pretty obviously, it bears a close resemblance to the models 1935 and 1934, which were in 32 or 380. And um, it's a bit more svelte, being a 22, of course, it does not need as heavy a slide. And it had a new alloy frame, which made it quite a bit lighter. And um, nice little gun, but before we talk about it any further, I'd like to shout out to my Patreons. This all costs money and your contributions help more than you know. I'd also like to shout out to channel benefactors like Rain City Shooting Center, Pinto's Guns, Pat Hillier, Leah Lovecraft, and others many others who have been very helpful for this channel and made my life a whole lot easier. So thank you all. So these were in production from, depending on sources, either 1948 or 1949 to either 1958 or 1959. Um, and contemporary advertising at the time uh, labeled it as a plinker. And it is a good little plinker short-range target gun, maybe. Or it could, of course, be carried for self-defense if you felt a 22 was either adequate or better than nothing. It's a very nicely made little gun. And we're going to be comparing it to model 1935 on the tabletop, so let's get to that. The Brenna 948 is not a large gun. It's about six inches long, and accepting the magazine extension, about four and a quarter inches high. It has a nine round magazine giving you nine plus one capacity. And after you load the first few rounds, you can actually access the follower through this window, which is a great assistance in loading the final rounds. It has features and from the slide down mechanics exactly identical as near as I can tell to the model 1934 and 35, although since it has a new alloy frame, it is significantly more svelte. Also being in 22 caliber, the slide is much less beefy than its older relative. It also has some slight differences in styling. Looking forward to the model 950 and model 70 in the way the rear of the slide is treated. And of course, it has a, a much more modern grip, which is fully interchangeable with the grips on the 1934 and 35. And of course the safety operates exactly like the model 1934 and 35. You swing it 180 degrees forward. And this is a bit inconvenient for people with smaller hands, but with large hands like mine, it's very easy. The trigger pull is, there's a little, a little slack and then you hit the wall and it breaks at about three and a half pounds and it's quite crisp. It's much nicer than the triggers I usually encounter on the older guns. And it's a very attractive gun, very well finished. This one is in superb condition and I got quite a good deal on it. The sights are the same as the 1934 and 35, which means they're not much. Uh, they're adequate for short range target shooting or plinking, which is you know, Beretta's own advertising, when these were on sale, advertised them as a plinker. And they're pretty good for that. And if you've mastered the gun, of course, it would be adequate for some types of small game as well. Um, it cycled very well. I don't recall any failures to function of any kind, except for light hammer strikes. So I'll be sourcing a new hammer spring. And uh, of course it did not cycle CCI quiet and other subsonic ammunition, you're gonna have to find out on a case by case basis if that will work. There is enough here that if you cared to mount a suppressor that could be threaded for one. And uh, quite attractive little gun. Now takedown for field stripping for maintenance is very simple. Remove, make sure the magazine's out, set the safety, pull the slide to the rear, and the safety will lock the slide back, at which point you 
press the barrel out and remove it through the top of the slide. And then release the safety and the slide will come off the front of the gun. You do have a full length guide rod, which has an extension on the end that acts as the spring for the safety. Now safety, of course, will just pull out at this point, but you don't really need to. And uh, there's really not a lot to it. But it is very well made, as one would expect of a Beretta of this period. Reassembly is just simply reversing the process. Again, in the safe position, insert the spring in the hole in the frame. Make sure you don't do that. And it just slides right back on until it locks. Insert the barrel through the top of the slide. Press it into position and drop the slide. And you are ready to go. Now, quite, quite a delightful little pistol, really. And unlike its older brethren, it does not lock the slide back on the magazine follower. I find this irritating. This irks me about these guns, but in the military parlance of Italy in the 1930s, it made sense because they want you to retain your magazines. And so, you know, this sort of forced you to not just drop the magazine and leave it in the mud. Anyway, as I say, quite a delightful little pistol, very nice to shoot, excepting the light strikes. And uh, I'm very happy with this. As of this afternoon, prices for Beretta Model 948s online are running typically $650 to $750. You can find them for less money, especially for examples that are not as nice as this one. And um, these did come in models with a longer barrel, which looked to be, this is a three and a half inch barrel, the standard, and it looked like there was a six inch barrel available also. There may have been other barrel lengths too, I was unable to determine that easily and did a lot of effort into it. Um, they also made an Olympic target model based on this frame slide and operating system with a dramatically improved trigger, a different big weight under the frame and some other changes. And um, there, are, there were some of these guns fitted with target sights. I suspect these are aftermarket. Um, because I very, very seldom have seen them, and I've not seen anything in Beretta literature of the time indicating that it was an option. But uh, all in all, it's a great little gun, very comfortable in the hand, good ergonomics. Yeah, I really like it, and I enjoy shooting it, and I'm looking forward to getting a new hammer spring in it and shooting it a whole lot more. I'm also probably going to use this for training new shooters because I am an instructor, and I do that and a 22 semi-auto is a very handy thing for that. Could you concealed carry it? Pretty easily, it doesn't weigh much, and you know, it's a good size. And if you are okay with carrying a 22 long rifle for self-defense, it wouldn't be a bad choice, but there are much better, more modern, and significantly less expensive options if you were to choose to do that. I can't see any good reason to concealed carry this pistol. That's good. It's accurate enough, the trigger's good enough, and um, I've seen some reports of issues, but the sort of thing that's pretty easily remedied. For me, it's just a cool, an unusually cool gun for plinking and training. And uh, as such, I'm sure it's going to serve very well. It's also pretty neato. Anyway, if you like the video as much as I like this gun, please hit the like button below. It really helps the channel. Commenting also helps the channel. And uh, I guess that's it for right now. So I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.